Okay, so what if a major price rally wasn't just something people were hoping for, but was actually programmed right into the code of an asset? That's the wild idea we're going to unpack today. Coming straight from our source material, the argument is that Ethereum's own mechanics have created a kind of mathematical formula for a huge price increase. This isn't about hype or speculation, it's about a concept called the burn math. Let's get into it. And the number at the absolute center of this entire argument is a big one. $10,000. Now, the source doesn't just pull this number out of thin air. They claim it's the logical conclusion of a system that's already up and running on the Ethereum network. So the big question, of course, is how in the world does the math actually get us there? And just to be super clear, the source material frames this whole thing around basic fundamental economics. It's about stripping away all the daily noise, all the chart watching, and focusing entirely on the classic laws of supply and demand. The argument is that what we're about to see is a predictable outcome of Ethereum's core design. So here's our game plan for breaking this down. First, we're going to look at the supply side, how Ethereum's code is literally designed to make it more and more scarce. Then we'll flip over to the demand side and identify what they call a powerful, relentless buyer. After that, we'll see what happens when those two forces collide, who really stands to benefit the most, and of course, we'll tackle the big question. If this is all programmed in, why isn't it happening right now? All right, first things first, the supply side of the equation. This whole argument really hinges on a concept the source calls ultrasound money, which is basically a fancy way of saying that the total amount of Ethereum in the world is designed to shrink over time. To really get this, you have to understand the before and after. For years, Ethereum was inflationary. New ETH was constantly being printed out of thin air to pay miners, which meant more and more supply was always hitting the market. But after a massive network upgrade they called the merge, that whole model got flipped on its head. Now, the network doesn't just create new ETH, it actively destroys it. And the engine that drives all of this is a piece of code called EIP-1559. It's a really simple but incredibly powerful idea. Every single time someone makes a transaction on Ethereum, a small piece of that fee is basically tossed into a digital black hole. It gets sent to an address that nobody can ever access. It's not saved. It's not respent. It is burned. It's literally deleted from existence forever. So what's the end result of all this burning? Well, the source points out that we're seeing a net deflation rate of about half a percent per year. Now, I know half a percent might not sound like that big of a deal, but think about it, compounding year after year. It means the code is programmed to make millions and millions of ETH just vanish from the total supply over the next few years. But here's where the argument gets really interesting. The total supply, they say, is only half the story. The real magic, the real game changer, is what's happening to the liquid supply. That's the ETH that's actually sitting on exchanges, ready to be bought or sold. And they call this phenomenon the illiquidity vice. I mean, just look at this breakdown of where all the ETH actually is. A huge chunk, 25%, is staked, locked up to help run and secure the network. Another chunk is locked up in DeFi applications. And a massive 50% is just sitting in cold storage, offline wallets that people use for long-term saving. All of that means the amount left on exchanges, the stuff you can actually trade, is just a tiny little slice of the pie. And this right here really puts it into perspective, doesn't it? While that total supply is shrinking by maybe half a percent a year, the source claims the tradable supply on exchanges is plummeting by 10 or maybe even 15% a year as more and more ETH gets locked away. The pool of ETH that new buyers can actually get their hands on is shrinking dramatically faster than the headline numbers would ever tell you. Okay, so we've established we have a rapidly shrinking liquid supply. But a shrinking supply on its own doesn't guarantee a price increase, right? That's only one side of the coin. So let's move to the other side of the economic equation, demand. And we're not talking about just any demand, but what the source calls the inelastic demand engine. The source argues that most analysts make a huge mistake right here. They look at the low transaction fees that regular people pay on the network, and they think, oh, demand must be low. But that's just user demand. The real story, the hidden driver of value, is system demand. This is the demand coming from all these massive layer two networks. These are faster chains built right on top of Ethereum that are forced to buy ETH to pay for their security. And that system demand has a very special economic quality. It's what's called inelastic. This is a super important term here. Inelastic demand just means you have to buy something pretty much no matter what the price is. 
Think about life-saving medication or the gasoline you need to get to work. You're going to pay what you have to pay. Well, the source argues that these Layer 2 networks are in that exact same boat when it comes to Ethereum. So, why exactly are they considered forced buyers? Well, it's pretty simple. Their entire security, the very foundation of their existence, depends on settling all their transactions back on the main Ethereum chain. They can't just pack up and move somewhere else without completely rebuilding their entire system. Their whole business model is built on paying this rent to Ethereum. And what this does is it creates a massive, constant, price-insensitive buyer that's in the market every single day, no matter what. Okay, so let's recap the two pillars of this whole argument. On one side, you have a mathematically shrinking pool of available ETH. On the other side, you have a relentless, price-insensitive buyer who absolutely has to get their hands on it. So now, let's see what happens when those two forces finally collide. This is the $10,000 question, quite literally. When you have a buyer who cannot stop buying, who is competing for an asset that is systematically being removed from the market, what is the only possible outcome for the price of that asset? According to the source, the result isn't just a nice, steady climb. The price is forced to go vertical. It has to keep shooting up until it finally hits a number that's high enough to convince the long-term holders, the stakers, the folks with their ETH in cold storage, to finally part with their coins and sell to these forced buyers. Now, a $10,000 ETH would mean a total market cap of about $1.2 trillion. I know, that number sounds enormous. But let's just put it in context for a second. Apple is currently worth around $3 trillion. The entire market for gold is at $14 trillion. So the source asks the question, is the base settlement layer for a new decentralized internet really not worth at least a fraction of these other massive assets? When you look at it that way, the number starts to look a little more plausible. And there's another really fascinating concept the source brings up, the perpetual bid. You see, a company like Apple might stop buying back its own stock if the price gets too high. But the Ethereum protocol, it doesn't care one bit about the dollar price. The burn is hardwired into the code. It just keeps bidding on ETH and destroying it with every transaction, whether a single coin is worth $10 or $10,000. The code itself is a buyer that never sleeps and never stops. Now, this whole economic model doesn't really affect everyone in the same way. The source makes a point to highlight that one group in particular is in a uniquely powerful position to benefit from all these mechanics, and that's the network validators. This is such a critical distinction. For a regular holder like you or me, the burn is great because it makes our ETH more scarce, which should help the price. But for validators, the people actually running the computers that secure the network, it's even better. Here's why. The main part of the transaction fee gets burned, which shrinks everybody's slice of the pie. But validators get to keep the priority fees, the tips that users pay to get their transactions through faster. So while the total supply of ETH is going down for everyone, their personal stack of ETH is actually growing. As the source puts it, they are on the receiving end of a massive wealth transfer. Okay, I know what you're probably thinking. This all sounds very automatic, very deterministic. So it brings up a really obvious question. If this rally is truly programmed, then why is an ETH at $10,000 right this second? Well, the answer, according to the source, comes down to a simple market reality, the time lag. These huge mechanical shifts don't happen overnight. The source breaks it down into phases. Right now, they say we're in the depletion phase, where that liquid supply of ETH on exchanges is just being steadily drained, hitting five-year lows. The source projects that by sometime in mid-2026, we could hit what they call the supply shock phase. That's the point where the exchange inventory effectively runs dry. And at that point, the price would be forced to re-rate and re-rate aggressively to find new sellers, eventually reaching that $10,000 target, where long-term holders are finally tempted to take some profit. So there you have it. That's the mathematical case for a $10,000 Ethereum. It's a pretty powerful argument, right? A shrinking liquid supply colliding head-on with a persistent, forced buyer. And it leaves us with this one last question. Is this future really locked in by the code? Or are there other market forces out there that could change the whole equation? The math certainly presents a compelling path, but in the end, the future is still unwritten. Don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching.